Hello, everyone. Uh, hang on tight. We're going to wait about a minute for everyone to join. So hello everyone and welcome. My name is Eric Tran Lee. Tommy Nicholas and Matt Lau and myself will be your host for today's session on real-time customer due diligence, CDD, and enhanced due diligence with identity verification. Tommy, why don't you present yourself? Hi everyone, my name is Tommy and I am the CEO at Alloy, alloy.co. And we are what we think of as the operating system for identity verification. What we do is we help businesses uh, ingest third-party data sources from vendors as well as first-party data from their businesses to turn them into identity verification decisions that are instant. So our goal is whether you're doing business with an individual or a business to be able to say yes or no to their identity in real time automatically without any manual review. To, um, and to reduce fraud by 50 to 90 percent, which we've done successfully with over 30 financial institutions and, and fintech companies. Um, and I'm really excited today to talk to, to about how we're going to work and, and how we're working with Guardian Analytics to, um, to bring the other side of, of the identity equation uh, together with identity verification, which is, of course, risk rating and customer due diligence. Thank you, Tommy. Matt, why don't you present yourself? Hi everyone, I'm, I'm Matt Lau. I'm a product manager here at Guardian Analytics and my previous experience include uh, six plus years in various AML departments at, at two big financial institutions. Thank you, Matt. I'm Eric Chan Lee. I'm the Vice President of Product Management of Guardian Analytics. And let me do some uh, quick house, house cleaning, uh, housekeeping first. Uh, today's session has been recorded. Uh, you, will receive a, you will receive a URL link notification uh, if you want to watch this session or send it to your colleagues. Uh, the presentation slides are in attachment as well as some uh, public sources URL. Uh, if you happen to have one, you know, more than two Bright Talk session browser uh, open, it may cause some echo, so pay attention. And if you have any questions today, there is a kind of orange button on the bottom right uh, where you can request live support uh, from Bright Talk. And again, please raise and suggest our content to improve our webinar. Let me quickly read the safe harbor before we go into the webinar. The following is intended to outline our general product direction. It is intended for information purposes only and may not be incorporated into any contract. It is not a commitment to deliver any material code or functionality and should not be relied upon in making purchasing decisions. The development release and timing of any features or functionality described for Guardian Analytics products remains at the sole discretion of Guardian Analytics. So let's start with a, an introduction of Alloy, um, uh, Tommy, and then I will describe Guardian. Okay, sounds great. Um, so as I kind of mentioned earlier, what Alloy does is we do identity verification primarily in that basically means, look, you're doing business with somebody, either a person or a business, who you may not be 100% certain um, whether they are who they say they are. The main uh, use case for this is online account opening of various kinds. We're really deep into business and consumer online account opening decisioning, making sure that customers coming in through digital channels are real, that they're real people, that they are those real people. And then the last piece is that they don't create any um, any sort of charge off fraud type risks. So essentially we're able to help get identities verified 98% of the time without a manual, without anyone needing to be manually involved while preventing 50 to 90% of a, a fraudulent account, um, account openings. And typically we're going into an institution that already has fraud prevention and we're still increasing the uh, amount of fraud they're able to stop by 59%. Okay, 
So let me describe uh, quickly what does Guardian Analytics. Uh, we are machine learning and behavior analytics, first and foremost, for financial crime detection. Uh, we uh, generate alerts with the lowest SARS positive for fraud and AML teams. And we have the highest accuracy rate. Uh, we are a member of the Federal Reserve's Fraud Definition Workgroup, uh, working on uh, ACH, wire and checks, uh, common taxonomy. And uh, our fraud detection analytics platform using behavior analytics is now integrated with a modern financial crime platform, AML, that has the following uh, characteristics. Uh, our modern financial crime platform is designed around a single financial crime repository uh, named Evidence Lake. It's built with state-of-the-art big data and secure cloud technology, certified SOC 2 Type 1 and PCI DSS. And uh, our AML risk scoring modules uh, combines uh, self-service smart rules configurability for AML regulatory compliance rules and machine learning. The combination of the, these two uh, layers and the modern technologies allowed us to offer to uh, BAC officer and AML team uh, modern capabilities. Um, and uh, the, the cloud design allowed us to integrate very quickly innovative technologies such as Alloy, which together bring a new level of autonomy, flexibility, and velocity to all AML teams. What we want to showcase today is how we are bringing modern capabilities to the customer onboarding workflow and the customer due diligence. The design principle is to engineer the customer onboarding workflow to reduce it from days and possibly weeks to same day. And to achieve this goal, we're enabling unique KYC and CDD capabilities that only modern technology would allow. For example, these are a set of very modern features, dynamic and easy to use KYC form, customizable KYC to comply quickly to new emerging regulatory CDD rules, real-time identity verification to mitigate first-time onboarding risk, advanced fraud prevention, real-time CDD risk scoring to avoid long decisioning time, real-time generation of alerts, configurable risk factors to adjust to financial institution risk appetite, and quick CDD relationship investigation to detect hidden beneficial ownership. Now, without further ado, let me hand it over to Matt and Tommy to showcase all these exciting modern capabilities. Thank you, Eric. So in this short demo, you will see how fast the onboarding process is with Evidence Lake. I will also demonstrate the flexibility of the application. Uh, to start off, Evidence Lake have real-time capture of all your KYC information into a repository where the status is updated in real time. We also retain the risk score associated with the KYC, and the score is updated as, as the KYC is being updated. To onboard a customer, the K, a KYC is created from various preset KYC forms uh, that is provided by Evidence Lake. It's very easy to use and allow for um, you know, different KYC forms for different K, uh, customer types. But here at Guardian Analytics, we know um, that you know regulations and audit results always changes, and so KYC forms need to be updated all the time. Therefore, we designed and built a self-service customizable KYC form. For example, if tomorrow FinCEN releases a guidance asking, uh, say, for the capture of how long this individual has been in the U.S., the admin of the system at your financial institution can make the change. You do not need to call us to make any changes at all. <clears throat> the question in the KYC form is configurable and very friendly, uh, user friendly. I can enter any question I want, choose any type of question to display. Like in this particular scenario, I am showing a multiple choice question, but this can be a drop down, it could be a free form text, radio buttons, and so forth. I can add up to 5,000 answers per question, and all of which I can choose to be risk scored or not. Here I'm associating um, a risk score of high, medium, and low to the three answers uh, as displayed. Um, 
you can see from this functionality that this is highly flexible and very user-friendly. Continu continuing on with the demo, um, here I am onboarding um, a person called John Smith and entering his information in the KYC. This form is designed to be simple to use because the key feedback from our customers is that KYC forms are, are too long and time consuming. That's why we designed to make the questions dynamic and collapsible. For example, and for one question, if I answered yes, it will pull up another question. If I say no, that question will never show up. Um, we also incorporated modern technology allowing for drag and drop of documents into the KYC form. Uh, you, it's very, you can quickly drag it from your desktop into the form itself and it'll be captured. And finally, I want to show the integration that Guardian Analytics have with um, Alloy, a real-time identification provider, to ensure that the person that you are onboarding is who they say they are. Uh, this is an optional feature in our application. Um, and Tommy, I'll let you explain more on this part. All right, thank you so much. So let me um, pop over to uh, the, a little a part a demo of how we do the identity verification. But first I want to actually talk about why the integration with your KYC form through Guardian or, uh, is so important. Um, the, the main reason is that we're trying to take this whole process of onboarding a client from, from uh, same day uh, or from many days down to same day. But you know the CDD process through Guardian Analytics is uh, one of is only one of the processes that you need to complete to onboard a client. The other process is going to come from a completely different group of people and um, a different set of requirements, which is going to be identity verification and fraud. And so each of those can end up being the long pole, right? If you can't complete CDD, you can't onboard the client. If you can't complete complete identity verification and fraud checks, then you can't onboard the client. And so what we're working on is making it so that both of these processes are seamlessly automated to the extent possible uh, without requiring duplicate um, data entry, without requiring a new process to be kicked off, without requiring new contact with the client. So what OWL is going to do is we're going to give you a very similar process to what you just actually looked at. What we're going to what we're going to provide you is we're going to provide you an identity verification engine. So you're going to be able to take, and, and what I've shown here is you're going to be able to take your third-party data sources that you work with, or we can actually help work with you to pick third-party data sources or providers for identity verification. So you're going to be able to select from whether you work with the credit bureaus, whether you work with you know, public records providers, fraud scoring providers, document verification providers, we're going to be able to let you select from which of those you'd like to use for automated identity verification. Again, you're not just like what you just heard about Guardian Analytics. You're not going to have to call us to get these into your decision workflow for identity verification. This is something that you can just add yourself or you can consult with us to help you build this out um, with you. Once you choose from those identity verification resources, you're actually able to you're actually able to choose how you're going to use them to come to, a, to come to a final decision. So for example, if you're working with a fraud score provider or two, you're easily able to drop in the rules about what fraud scores are going to require review versus which can be automatically approved. This can get super granular all the way into what type of addresses are valid, are PO boxes valid, are, and which providers do you want to check those with, down to, um, even certain types of sanction screening, or even going into, or even going into classic sort of, is the address valid? Is the SSN valid? Is the, you know, if it's a business, is the FEIN valid, et cetera? So all of the requirements that you're that you're looking to pull in, either from internal or external data, you're going to get a configurable engine that's going to outline the rules for how automated identity verification should happen, and when the and then when you have input or the customer has input the answers to the, uh, to the KYC form that you provided, whether that be just their information, the answers to those questions, as well as documents, um, Guardian Analytics is going to facilitate the real-time transfer of that information to Alloy to get an identity verification decision. 
And so for somewhere between 80 to 98% of your clients, that may be the end of that process because you will be able to get an automated decision that ends up looking visually like this but is delivered real-time back to Guardian Analytics so that they can proceed with the CDD, having with identity verification either complete or in a pendant state. In this particular case, what we're showing is that you're able to dive really, uh, really deeply into how you've used your third-party vendors for identity verification. Every identity verification comes with an with a auto-generated report that will both tell you what the final decision was what your custom decisions that describe the final decision, custom alerts, or even custom good things, you know, either good things you want to call out about the client or potentially negative things that, that are risk indicators um, about the identity verification. You can go a lot deeper into this. So you can even go all the way into identifying um, identities that would, that would look to a traditional identity verification process um, like they're valid because all of the details match up, like the name and the address and the email and the phone, birthday, the SSN, they all match up. But one of your potentially like fraud, a fraud scoring provider is able to, like uh, um, like ID Analytics who we work with or Socure or other fraud scoring providers might be able to suss out, no, you know what, this actually is a synthetic identity. And even though it looks valid, it, it, is, it is not actually a valid identity. So you're going to be able to stop a lot of fraud. And that's what can give you the confidence to go into full automation. When you're, able to be able, when you're able to be confident that you're going to stop the bad identities from coming through, that means if you get back an approved decision, and again, you can customize how that decision is made. So you have an in-house expertise in identity verification. You can import that expertise into our system and feel confident that's being carried out, feel confident that you're going to be able to go back and look to see that it is being carried out, and be confident that you'll be able to adjust it as you learn more things. Um, Guardian Analytics also facilitates document collection. So if you want the documents to be part of your identity verification process as well, they can optionally be also uh, both stored in the audit trail for a particular identity verification, either for a business or an individual, or if you uh, are collecting like driver's licenses or passports, it's possible to also facilitate an attempt to do a real-time verification via a machine learning algorithm, um, either via our partners or, or if you have your own identity document validation third party, we can integrate with that. So it's, it's both possible to do, uh, it's both possible to have the documents live in the audit trail with the identity verification if documents were part of that. So they can be part of the CDD trail as as well as part of the identity verification trail. And in some cases, those identity documents can be verified or not verified, uh, you know, approved or denied in real time, just like the, the, the sort of background check um, fraud scoring type services. And that's how we're trying to, that's how we are working to facilitate the convergence of these two processes. Identity verification and CDD, make them integrated, make them both real time, and make them enhanced with each other by knowing about each other, by being integrated with each other, we go from two potential long poles to one seamless process, each with its own appropriate configuration engine and audit trail, um, and each uh, with enough features uh, and intelligence built into them to allow your company to confidently move forward with full or uh, near full automation for the entire onboarding process. So I'll hand it now back over uh, to the Guardian Analytics team to talk more about the real-time alerts that are going to be generated by this combined process and why real-time alerts are so much better than next day or after the fact or non-real-time alerts uh, when you need to actually intervene in one of these processes, be it identity verification needing a manual review or customer due diligence needing an alert to be worked by an expert. Thank you, Tommy. Um, as Tommy said, going back to the onboarding of John Smith, the moment the KYC is submitted, a real-time onboarding alert um, is created for John Smith um, for the BSA AML team to work on. The alert is designed to be in context so that you never need to leave the screen. And the risk factors are easily 
identified, especially with the color coding on the risk factors that really matter. In this particular scenario, it's a um, person's citizenship is from Syria. Um, and the analysts, the analysts will get access to our link analysis, a, our, a relationship investigation tool that we built uh, in Evidence Lake. The link analysis is built because a common problem that I hear from our customer is that investigations are taking way too many hours, um, especially relating to beneficial ownerships. Uh, and this is our solution. Based on a survey of our customers, in order to identify a multi-layer complex beneficial ownership uh, structure that can take anywhere from one to three hours, just connecting all the dots, all the relationships, identifying the ultimate beneficial owners. Uh, and that process, most of the time, is done manually and is very prone to errors. You have incorrect relationship being linked in, the percentages of the ownership is, is confused. But what is provided in Evidence Lake is that in just a few clicks, the link analysis will reveal all the signers, the transactions, the controlling parties, beneficial owners, ultimate beneficial owners, including the percentage owned. This one to three hour process is now reduced to minutes. And after the investigation, uh, the disposition of the alert is reflected in real time. Here we uh, rejected John Smith uh, due to the risk pose. And so the resolution is reflected to reject it. And a KYC profile is created and stored for every prospect and customer. Um, that way you can use it for future investigation. The good thing about the modern infrastructure of Evidence Lake is that these data are stored forever, uh, for as long as you want. And a common nuance from legacy system um, is that it takes weeks to make changes. For example, if Vincent released another guidance where it involves, you know, changing a, a customer, changing a country risk from high to low, a normal routine for a legacy, a legacy system is that someone at the financial institution will need to contact the vendor. The vendor will make uh, take some time to make the changes, and then the financial institution will need to verify uh, the changes and test the changes. And this is normally a two to four week process actually to just make a very simple change um, in, in say a country risk. With evidence like this is reduced by making the risk factors self-service configurable, uh, de decreasing the process from two to four weeks today to like a day, it could be same day. And what I mean by that is the country list, for example, here, we show them all and this can be done by the system admin at, at your financial institution. It does not need to be done by Guardian Analytics at all. Uh, we can offer the help to do it as well, but this can be done by you. Um, and you can change um, the country, say, for Afghanistan here from high to low by just a dropdown. Very easy to use. Um, and then after making the changes, in order to give you a peace of mind, we have a report designed especially to show the before and after change. So if I make a change for say Afghanistan from high to low, what is the impact to all the high risk customer at my financial institution, medium risk customer, low risk customers. Uh, we showed it before and the after. Before you need to make the, the change, before you save the changes, you see this report. So you know, okay, is this gonna impact um, the alerts that we generate, is this gonna impact day-to-day -day operations? Um, and how many more or less alert am I expected to see going forward? So in close, uh, Evidence Lake along with Alloy can enhance your onboarding process, making it faster and much more flexible compared to legacy systems. The time is reduced from up to three weeks to potentially the same day. Uh, this concludes the demo portion of the webinar. Eric, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you, Matt. So uh, I hope you have seen those uh, very modern, exciting capabilities that will uh, basically enhance the autonomy, the flexibility, and the velocity of AML teams, enhance their, their efficiencies. Uh, let me summarize them. Uh, dynamic, easy-to-use KYC form, 
Customer has all QYC to comply with quickly emerging regulatory CDD rules, uh, real-time identity verification to mitigate first-time onboarding risk, advanced fraud detection, real-time CDD risk scoring to avoid uh, long decisioning time, real-time generation of alert, configurable risk factor to adjust to financial institution risk appetite, and quick CDD relationship investigation to detect hidden beneficial ownership. Uh, if you want to learn more, um, you can go to our uh, Bright Talk channel um, here uh, in Tax, or to our website to uh, download white papers, or uh, to come and visit us at ACAM in Hollywood, Florida on April 15th. Uh, this uh, closed the, 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 the presentation session, and I will open up the Q&A session. So we have a couple of questions here. Uh, one of the first question is, why does using multiple data sources increase automation? Uh, Tommy, this seems to be in your alley. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there's, there's really two reasons why multiple data sources almost always increases automation in identity verification, at least specifically. Um, the first is that different sources of data, let's talk, for example, phone carrier data versus public records data versus credit header data, they just have different information about clients. And so if you're looking to do something like triangulate whether a date of birth is valid, whether a current address is the current address, or at least a address that has belonged to a customer in the past, the more data sources that you have that are non-overlapping, non-strictly overlapping, the more coverage you're going to get, and the more coverage you're going to get, the more automation you're able to do because the fewer exceptions you have to handle, right? So for example, the fewer um, documents you need to collect to ver verify a particular edge case or date of birth or address or something like that. The second, and I think actually the most important reason is that when it comes to data vendors that are about risk, so that might be fraud risk, that might be charge off risk, that might be previous bad behavior, the more data you have, the more confident you can be of two things. One is that if one data source feels very strongly about somebody, but you're able to get more information to override that, you're going to be able to automatically understand whether you need to sift that customer into a denied state or a review state or if it's likely a false positive. And there's just, there, just for structural reasons, there's almost no chance that one provider could ever get the perfect, um, you know, the perfect set of data on those because uh, data vendors have to make choices about what data they collect and don't. Their, their customer bases are different, so they don't get the same data as feedback data. Almost just like for structural reasons, it will always be true that you can get um, increased automation by adding more data. The second thing, and uh, the second part of that is when, is if there are things you really don't want to miss, um, then it's more likely you will not miss them if you are using multiple data sources because, again, those sources make choices about what to include and what not to include. And by using multiple sources, you're able to make sure that you won't, you won't miss a particular you know, risk factor that you, would have, uh, that you would have missed otherwise. And so typically what we see is that on the sort of need to cover these bases elements, having more data helps you cover those bases more often. And then on the should we flag this for potentially bad behavior elements, having more data sources, it almost always helps you sift out more false positives than false negatives. There's a danger to this, though, which is if you just integrate more data sources and take their sort of best practices without understanding how they might help and um, feed each other, then you can end up with a worse situation because it becomes, it becomes like um, it becomes additive. So essentially, if any of the data sources say anything potentially negative or neutral, if you're sending them into a review state or a denied state, then you're just taking the, the sum of what all of them say is bad, as opposed to combining them into a combined answer that has the context of the other data sources um, speaking to each other. You don't want to you don't want to get in a situation where by adding in more data, which should have helped you say yes to more customers, you say no to more customers, for example, uh, because you've simply integrated it so that it's, um, instead of it being kind of a waterfall and a combined decision, it becomes like a, uh, it be just becomes like a, um, uh, just like a tree, uh, or sorry, it, be it becomes just like a, a link in a chain and you need to pass every link in that chain to get to the end. That's what you want to avoid. 
Okay, thank you for this very compressive, comprehensive answer. Uh, we, we have another question that uh, actually is very related to the first one. Uh, wh when is it helpful to still get a human investigator involved uh, in, in the uh, fraud prevention investigation process? Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely defer to Matt on that for CDD. <laughs> I'd love to hear his thoughts as well. But on identity verification, it's typically most important to get a person involved in three areas. The first is if just getting more information from the client is, is going to be what helps you get through the identity verification. Let's say, for example, they have a frozen file at one of the credit bureaus and that's impacting the ability to get the data. Well, you need to work through them right, to get, to get that unfrozen or get a, a unfreeze pin. Let's say that perhaps they have, uh, they just look like they've mistyped some information and you'd like to work through that with them. Um, that's a very straightforward, and that is, those are both super common scenarios, and there's a whole bunch of others, where just contacting the client and being able to work through exceptions with them is one of the important things. The second is when getting more information from the client in addition to what you originally asked is important. So let's say, for example, for either compliance or fraud reasons, you want to get sort of supporting evidence of a particular claim. Like the easy one is they claim they live at this address, we really want supporting address that proves that uh, supporting evidence that we can be confident in that proves that because we're going to mail them, you know, that's where the communication is going to go. So we really want extra extra evidence of that or source of funds. We need extra evidence that they actually control the source of funds that they're looking to fund their account with or or link up. So in those cases, it is hard to get all of the long tail of the sort of ifs and nats for what you might ask for next uh, into an automated um, into an automated process because this is exception handling essentially it's not what you it's not the main course and it's not it's not the main path and it's not even the, it's not even one of several paths it could be just like a long tail of potential things and the third is when um, is is when scenarios that just can't confidently be handled uh, by the by an engine um, come up so. Um, it, but it's typically the third is, is a very small set of circumstances. You, what you really don't want is you don't want somebody pouring over data in a way that a machine could have, or not a computer could have already made the same decision, right? So you don't want somebody like with a sort of a spreadsheet of things they look for, like they look for this attribute, then they look for that attribute, and they're just looking through the data for those things because a computer can do that and, and a rules engine can do that and a decision engine can do that and they can do it really accurately, really fast. What you more want is investigators looking for the ways in which that engine is doing a bad job. So if they're looking, looking at customers who might have been sent to a manual review or even have been denied or have been approved, but there are really obvious indicators for why that might not be the case. And you want to use your intuition to figure out what's worth investigating more so that you might want to tweak your, th tweak your thresholds or your or, um, or how you're making those decisions. And so those are really the three areas, exception handling, uh, requests for more information, and digging through uh, cases where the computer has made a decision or, or made a triage decision, but it may not have been the right decision. And it's not about reviewing that particular decision. It's about reviewing the process holistically, using a human a human's instincts to figure out um, to figure out what's going wrong in the process and what you might want to re-engineer, period. Okay, thank you, Tommy. Maybe, uh, uh, Matt, uh, with your CAM experience and the AML rescoring using, you know, smart rules and machine learning, uh, what would be the role of uh, an investigator and, and how those technology would help him? Yeah, so the role of the investigator here th does not change. They will investigate the alert, except instead of investigating the alert the next day, they're investigating the alert in real time. And then the disposition of the alert can also be in real time. And also, the other impact of Evidence Lake is that the investigation time is much far more reduced uh, with all the tools that are provided, uh, all the potential integrations that are provided. Uh, the investigation time is much, is much shortened. And so the onboarding of the customer can be same day and Everybody is more happier now. The customer is, you know, they can get to use their account faster. The banker, they can, you know, get to get to close the account, uh, cl you know, get their account closed faster. And then the 
investigator get their alert done faster. And that's the benefit. Thank you, Matt. I have a question from the audience uh, concerning uh, actually the infrastructure itself. Can the software product pull in all of an existing customer CDD, EDD, QIC information, and documentation from several existing bank systems such as FileNet, Mainframe, et cetera? Uh, let, let me take that one. So, um, uh, first of all, um, the foundation of this modern technology is a big data cloud platform. So uh, we're using all the data ingestion in tech possible. Um, so uh, without being too technical, uh, we are using Kubernetes, uh, Kafka, and, and, and big data technology. So from a pure infrastructure standpoint, we can collect any data into the big data single repository platform. The method on the back uh, is to normalize it against uh, an AML, if you put this case, schema that would allow the single um, financial repository platform to unify the data into a format uh, whereby the risk scoring could, could be applied as well as um, you know, modern CDDs and identity verification on it. So the, the, the first question is yes. The second question, it's a normalization exercise. So uh, we don't know what other bank system uh, referred to, but we have standard connectors to a couple of existing bank system. And for the new ones, if they do have APIs, then that would uh, be uh, very easy. Uh, if they don't, then it's a, it's a typical batch, batch import uh, into the system. Um, I have two other questions that is, has to do with the KYC template. Uh, how many questions can be added to the KYC template? Uh, Matt, I think this is for you. Sure. Um, so there is no limit on the number of questions that can be added to the KYC template. Um, questions can be added to be risk scored. They can be added just as a normal question that's not going to be scored, you know, like a name or something. Um, so there's no limit. That's the quick answer. Okay. Uh, we're going to take one last question. Um, are all the risk factors based on high, medium, and low? And what about sanction? Uh, no, there are multiple risk type of risk factors that we have. Uh, what I showed you at first was the what we call the type one risk factors, which is um, we have a list of, say, countries or businesses where they're associated to a high, medium, low, or sanctioned. Um, and, but we also offer other risk factors, such as, let's say there's a question on the KYC form, uh, are you a PEP, a politically exposed person? And the answer would be like yes or no. So that's what we call in our system as a type 2 risk factor, where you can score on a specific response. So if they select yes, it's a certain amount of points. If they select no, it's another certain amount of points. And we have additional risk factors, say, a, um, for example, if this uh, subject has five previous SARS on them, uh, where one of three SARS is 20 points, three of the six SARS is 50 points, you know, um, so far, this is what we call a type three risk factor, where we score on a range. Uh, we have many other risk factors that um, I can talk about, but for that, for your uh, question, uh, no, we have many type of risk factors. I only showed you the one that uh, had high, medium, low, and sanction. Thank you, Matt. Uh, so this and uh, this session on real-time CDD, EDD, and identity verification. Uh, please visit us, visit us on uh, guardianalyst.com or on our Bright Talk channel. If you want to learn more about uh, ML Evidence Lake or our fraud detection solution. Uh, again, we will be at ACAM Hollywood, Florida on April 15. If you want to see a live demo, uh, it would be a pleasure to show it to you. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, everyone.